Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now today I want to talk about the former Soviet republics of the Baltics, who swapped their good relationship with Russia for an irrational hatred when they joined the European Union. And it's cost them a lot more than the amount of benefits they've received since then from bus Brussels. Now, on October the 31st, a countdown clock was launched in Vilnius to indicate the time between the disconnection of the Republic of Lithuania from Brel, which is the Belarus, Russia, Estonia and Latvia, Lithuania energy ring connecting the Baltic countries with Russia and Belarus. And that's scheduled for the 7th of February 2025. So effectively, the Baltic states are saying, we don't want cheap energy from Russia and we'd rather have more expensive energy and make our people poorer because we now hate the Russians. Now, on the following day, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia intend to connect to the EU power grid. At this stage, preparations for the disconnection are nearing completion. Now, the governments of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia have guaranteed that the transition will be seamless and any price fluctuations will be temporary. Yeah, does anybody really trust guarantees and promises of politicians anymore, particularly on energy these days? Now, it's notable there's no mention of the fact that after this, the region will lose access to any... Um, spare administrative capacity and basically they're going to be defenceless against any outages and emergencies. Now the minister, Prime Minister of uh, Lithuania, Ingrida Simeon, and the Energy Minister, Danis uh, Krivius, look, inaugurate a clock. The clock will count down the last hundred days between the synchronization of the Baltics with the grids of the Western countries and their withdrawal from the agreement on the common electricity system of Brill. Now, as Simonia highlighted, the preparatory work for Lithuania's withdrawal is almost complete. She said, we have achieved the goal much faster than we anticipated. In turn, Minister Krivis likened the situation regarding Lithuania's disconnection from Brel to the withdrawal of the last Russian tanks and soldiers from the Republic's territories uh, in the early 1990s in terms of significance. However, didn't mention the fact that since then the population has dropped by one third, the birth rate has dropped dramatically, and all the young people leave the country for other places in the EU to find work. Now, the minister noted that despite the fact that the Baltic states have not bought any electricity from Russia and Belarus for over two years, the frequency of the transformer substations is still controlled from a Moscow-based control centre. We will sever the final link connecting us to Moscow, but not only in the energy sector, but in all areas. Now, on February the 8th, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia will start a joint testing phase, operating in what they are called a closed island mode. Now that signifies that they've got to collectively ensure the maintenance and frequency to guarantee their energy production and distribution. The crevice also stated that the country would connect to Europe the following day via a constructed synchronous connection with Poland. Now before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. This can be done by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all now just for watching, because every viewer is important to me. Now, the minister laughably asserted uh, that, that there would be no cuts in any supply, and general public would not feel any power outrages. Yeah, well, how can he guarantee that? Now, according to the minister, the final requisite ed element was the launch of the synchronous compensator in the city of Telsai on the 25th of October. That's a device that will ensure the independent operation of the Lithuanian power grid during the reconnection. Now, Ingrida Semenya, whose government is about to conclude its term of office following the recent parliamentary elections, considers the imminent disconnection from Brel one of our more significant agreements. God knows how, why losing 
cheap energy sources is something to celebrate but I'm sure that those in the UK will see the irony in that. <laughs> now the Lithuanian state uh, owned energy company Litgrid which operates the power transmission lines of the country has announced its intention to dismantle the remaining power lines connecting the Republic with Russia and Belarus. I mean currently some of the power lines connecting Lithuania with third countries are still in operation and they said please be advised that all lines will be disconnected on the 8th of February following the expiration of the Brel Agreement. Immediately following this a demolition work will commence. Lick confirmed. It's been stated for the time being it's necessary to maintain the operation of some of the lines scheduled for demolition given that Lithuania still remains connected to the Russian energy system. The lines are still required to guarantee the stability and reliability of the system. Oh, no surprise there, is there? However, the Lithuanian government has already excluded seven 330 kilovolt lines from the list of uh, objects that are important to the national security. Now, the lines in question connect the following locations, which is Vilnius and Moldachenko, which is Belarus, Alnius and Grochko, which is Belarus, the Krunus pump storage plant and the Sovietsky plant in the Kaliningrad of the Russia, plus the Ignalina power plant where the dismantling work is in the way, plus the Smorgon in the Pogots region, as well as two jumpers between Britnell and Sovietsk in the Russia. Now, despite the Baltic countries' clear rejection of Russian electricity in 2022, the Brown system continues to play a pivotal role in guaranteeing the energy security of these three nations. In fact, the energy systems of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia and the border regions of uh, Russia and Belarus have been synchronised into a single ring for generations. This synchronization was essential in the event of an incident should one of the power plants uh, the system cease functioning. I mean, in these instances, the lost output is then compensated by other power plants connected to the network within seconds. I mean, since the Soviet era, Russia has fulfilled the role of maintaining the frequency in the shared Brill energy networks. And it offers this service to other participants at a price well below the market rate. Now in 2018, the cities of Riga, Tallinn and Vilnius initiated the discussions regarding their withdrawal from the Brel. At the outset, more distance dates were proposed, but Vilnius persuaded its partners to accelerate the process as much as possible. Obviously just driven down. I mean, this was obviously uh, pushed by uh, Washington and uh, basically it was a guy called Jeffrey Wyatt. Now, everybody will remember him. He was the guy who worked with Victoria Newland in, uh, in the Ukraine. And he's been uh, pretty much involved in everything that the Baltics are doing and why they're getting out of this. And they don't really, I think, understand what they're getting. I mean, it's basically, he says, getting out of the Brel will enhance the security of your country and eliminate the final Russian bargaining chip that can be used against you and your citizens. Yeah, tell that to the Ukrainians in this winter. And your economy, says Payet. Now, just remember, Payet seems to go around the world wherever the US needs to cause trouble. I mean, he was in the Ukraine, then he was in uh, Greece. He seems to get around and around and around, uh, causing problems. And of course, obviously the United States is pleased to see Russia losing established diplomatic relations with its neighbouring countries, but it doesn't actually care. I mean, the Baltic states cease to have been of any interest and um, for Russia, and they were always, during the Soviet Union, a drain on the system. I mean, they don't actually produce anything. I mean, can anybody tell me anything that the Baltic countries produce that's unique that anybody actually needs? I mean, all they do is export people. Now, obviously, they, they are talking about the desynchronization with the Brill. They're going to have to synchronize with the AU networks. Now, this is going to be a bit of a problem because the scenarios they're looking at uh, is 
it's going to be difficult. Europe has severe problems in energy transmission anyway. I mean, in July 2024, the ministers of the three Baltic confirmed that they're synchronising their own energy system with the February of uh, 2025 with the EU. But that doesn't mean that they're going to have plenty of electricity. I mean, countries like Germany are importing electricity from France. Now, they might have said to Moscow and Minsk, oh, we don't really want your system and we don't really want all of this. But can they rely on Poland? No, Poland's can't, Poland can't be relied on simply because it can't guarantee its own electricity needs. So what they're doing in the Baltics is continuing their, persuading their population that get rid of energy dependence on Russia. They're joining the unified energy system of Europe. But unified is nothing but. I mean, the problem with Europe is its energy system isn't working, and everybody knows that. I mean, according to Boris uh, Maskovich, there's no unified energy system in Europe. I mean, in fact, there's as many as six different systems. I mean, consequently, two cables run from Estonia to Finland, which is part of the Nordic Energy Association, Nordel. Lithuania shares a border with Poland, which is part of the UCTE energy system. Plus, an energy cable runs from Lithuania, which following the closure of the Ignalina power plant constructed during the Soviet era in the 70s, is reliant on imported electricity, and that goes to Sweden, which is part of the same Nordel. Now, Lithuania, Lithuania sources the majority of its electricity from Sweden, with a Part of that purchase is being then resold on to Poland, which then resells some of it to Germany. In Latvia, the only countries which it can sort energy from are Lithuania and Estonia, and they are dependent on others. So the process of deindustrialization is getting underway, and this whole situation is actually ridiculous. Now, it's worth noting that even pro-government media outlets in the Baltic countries are openly discussing the potential for an increase in electricity prices due to the disconnection from Brown. I mean, they, according to the government, this will have a short-term impact, but you've just got to look at the long-term implications. Any synchronisation with European networks is going to cost about $500 million, but OK, that was impact on tariffs was minimal, as the majority was, costs were set up by the grants by the European Union. But that's not the major issue. By leaving Braille, the Baltic countries will lose access to the reserve capacity. Well, we covered that. In the event of emergency, they're completely knackered, right? And they're never going to be able to cover that. Plus, the costs are going to be huge. Right? The moment they are uh, getting electricity from Russia, it's about uh, 40 uh, euros per kilowatt hour. And uh, average cost of such a service uh, is much higher in the likes of Poland, where it's almost 70 euros. In Germany, it's well over 120. And these costs are just going to continue to grow. So all of this is just the basically the uh, European Union uh, oriented politicians are looking to impoverish their citizens. And, oh, we'll get rid of Russia, but what we're going to do is uh, make everything more expensive at a time when we just don't actually have the ability to do anything about it. It's crazy. It's not as if they have their own way of generating electricity through nuclear or their own gas, etc. I mean, the electricity generation and uh, reduction in uh, 2023 was down 12% from uh, 2010. Now, Sony will be completely reliant on uh, imported electricity by 2024. It's almost 80%. Now, Latvia is not much better off and uh, um, Lithuania is in the same boat. So it's dependent on uh, Poland and it's dependent on, um, on Sweden and Finland. So they're just crazy and I just don't quite get it. However, that's just all part of the European energy madness that's uh, happening in the Baltics and again all over Europe. 
I can't imagine it. I mean, I know the UK is kind of crazy, and I get messages from you in the comments section about mad Ed Miliband who's going to completely bankrupt the UK and make you have to wait to boil your kettle only twice a day and put everything into thermos flasks. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like uh, my program, please share and um, subscribe. And uh, if you want to donate, please click on the like button and uh, the thanks at the bottom of the screen. Thank you all. See you all again soon.